I've been looking at the Canon R6 for a while now, but I had also thought about the Sony a7S 3 the Canon R5, the Canon C70, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, the Z Cam, and loads more really. But I just love the new Canon RF lenses. I think they're amazing. I really like the look of them, I like the feel of them, and the fact that they've got that control ring as well. I really like that. So I decided to hire the Canon R6 for the weekend to see what it was like. And spoiler alert. Wait, no. No spoiler alert. You'll have to watch to the end of the video to find out. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, say hello in the comments and introduce yourself. My name's Sam and I do tutorials, camera gear reviews and lots more. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and also press the bell so that you get notified when I upload new videos. Today, we're gonna to be looking at the Canon R6 and this video is gonna be centered around using this for video as opposed to the photography capabilities of this camera because that's what I mainly do. I'm mainly a videographer and I'll be looking at the features that I use the most and what I'm looking for in a new camera. And hopefully I've covered most of your questions, but if not, leave me a comment and ask me anything and I will get back to you. First of all, the new body shape. I really like it. It feels really comfortable in the hands and it's just, it's just so comfy. It feels like it was made for the human hand. <laughs> I'm not gonna go into all of the little upgrades that they've done because I'm, I'm sure you know it all but the things I like the most that little nubbin on the on off switch is really good there's a few quirks that I probably have to get used to but that's quite subjective and the same with any new camera that you'd get so I'm not gonna get hung up on those now it's not got the screen on top like the R has or the R5 but to be honest I never looked at that anyway so that's something that doesn't really bother me in the slightest I know it will for some people so it could be a deal breaker but for me I'm not bothered. I don't need the fancy screen. I've got all the info that I need on the LCD screen, so I'm fine with that. The only thing that does bother me about the design is the smaller screen. And once you start using it, there is a big difference, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. I, I kind of forgot about it after a couple of days. So just be mindful of it. But for me, the image that this camera produces outweighs that little lack of screen space. I can live with that. Right, something that you all probably want to know, overheating. Now, I had this from Thursday afternoon and I've used it every day since, all day, every day. I didn't have any issues with overheating whatsoever. I didn't even have the overheating warning or indicator on. So I think they've fixed that problem with the firmware update. I was pleasantly surprised. I can't tell you how happy I was about that because I was worried that this was gonna cause all sorts of issues. I was using it exactly how I would be using this camera and how I've been using the EOS R since I've had it. And there was no restrictions whatsoever. So chuffed to bits about that. Now, I, shall I put this down? Because I keep, I keep pointing it in people's faces. I've used the Ninja 5 monitor for a long time. And a lot of the times I'll use the 4K 10 bit. And that's incredible. It's such a difference compared to the 8 bit. But obviously having internal 10 bit 422 in there is a game changer. And I have to say it looks even better than it does in the Ninja. There's just something about it. There's less noise and it's just, it's just so crisp. It's, it's a dream. It's an absolute dream. And it just makes you want to film everything. Literally, I just keep picking it up because I want to film stuff. The image you get out of this camera is incredible. For the price, I am absolutely astounded. I, you know, because there's a quite a big difference in price between this and the R5. So you'd think that there was going to be a substantial difference in quality, but there isn't. And I'll show you some examples in a bit. I've always been a bit nervous and felt a little bit restricted when it comes to low light videography with the R because I used to have the Sony and that was great in low light, but because it was 8-bit, as soon as I started colour grading it, it became very noisy very quickly. 
The R was different. You can get away with a little bit more, but it's, there's still a bit of noise there. With the R6, check out these clips I got in the dark. We're just using the lights from this shop outside. It's, it's noise free, it's incredible. I could not believe it. And I'm using a mixture of F2 and F2.8. They're good lenses, but still, it was a dream to color grade. I was absolutely blown away. And this is the thing that made me want an upgrade to start with. And the fact that this does exactly what I want it to, and looks as good as it does, it could be the thing that does it for me. The 50 and 60 frames looks absolutely amazing. The 120, however, is a little bit grainy because it's 1080p. It's not terrible. I, I rarely shoot 120 anyway, so I can get away with it. I don't mind using the odd clip here that's 1080 at 120p because it's literally only gonna be seconds. If you shoot a lot of 120p stuff and you want it to be that 4k crisp quality it's definitely worth going for the R5 or something like the Sony. Now when it comes to the file sizes and how it plays back in Premiere I'm using Adobe Premiere Pro that's renowned for having choppy playback footage with 4k and yeah when I played the first clip back it was just it was awful it was slow it was jittering all over the place couldn't couldn't do it don't think i finished a single clip but what i've been doing is converting all the files before i begin editing to prores so just pop all your files into adobe media encoder convert them all to prores then drop them into your project and it runs smooth as pie i don't know if that's is that is that saying smooth as pie i don't want to say buttery smooth because everybody says that smooth as pie is the new one what else is smooth leave <laughs> Leave a comment, dare I? Is that a good idea? It's probably not, probably not a good idea, is it? Now, some people said that there was a big color difference between the R6 and the R because they want to use those cameras as like an A and B, which I'll be doing. But I have to say, I didn't notice much. Yes, there's a slight difference naturally, but not much. So I'm going to have no problem color grading that. I'm not going to have to change my workflow at all, really. It's going to be fine. Because the R6 is full frame 4K, you're getting that extra depth of field. So you can see in the trees here, the background's a lot more out of focus on the R6 and it just looks so nice. And these were shot using the same aperture, f2.8. So that's something to consider if you're thinking of getting the R or the R6. Full frame 4K extra depth of field. I also wanted to test how good the 4K was in the R6 compared to the R5 because the R5's got the HQ mode. Now there is a difference, you can tell. If you look at this shot there's a lot more detail in the denim jacket and the R5 does look nice. You can tell there's a bit more clarity but only when you look closely the R6 is still plenty good enough. But is the R5 £2,000 more good enough? For me, the R6 is plenty good enough. I'm so happy with the results. I'm blown away. I know I keep saying it. it must be a windy day because I'm blown away. Now, I know I've been watching people's vlogs with the warped edges and the stabilization, and I really don't like it. And I didn't have loads of time to test it out because I was filming loads of videos over the weekend. But I can live with it. It's there. I can live with it. I know you can switch it off. So I'll probably be doing that. And I think I've heard people say that there's gonna be an update to that anyway. So I reckon they'll get rid of that wobbliness. Wobbliness. As long as it's not happening in these videos, which it won't be because it's on a tripod and it won't happen when I'm doing my B-roll either because it'll be in slow-mo. Um, I'm happy, I don't mind it if it's just in my vlogs. So who is this camera for? Well, it's, I'm gonna tread carefully because I know there's been a lot said about the overheating issues and also some of the functionalities with these cameras, the R6 and the R5, compared to the Sony. But they are, let's not forget, they're still incredible cameras, more than capable of video work. Now, I'm going to approach this but purely from my point of view. I'm mainly doing YouTube stuff at the moment and it's perfect for doing videos like this and capturing some b-roll where you're not constantly filming all the time. I will probably be doing weddings on it. If there's no overheating issues at all, I've got no problem filming a wedding. I'm happy with that. I've been filming weddings on the R since I got it and I've been more than happy with that. If you wanna get the R or the R6 or the R5, I think it depends what you're doing and how much money you've got. If you've got loads of money and you need 
120 frames a second, then go for the R5. If you don't need 120 frames per second, and you also don't need to use it for photography a lot, because the R5 is better for photography, definitely consider this one. If you're not doing paid work, and 4K doesn't bother you, you want to keep your file sizes to a minimum, definitely go for the R because it's still a fantastic camera. I've been using it for all my videos. Absolutely love this camera. It's what I'm filming this on now. It's, a, it's amazing. And if you do want 4K, you can get yourself the Ninja 5 monitor and you've got 10-bit 422. So that, that, that's your option. What I would like to see in these cameras is more codec options. For example, if this recorded straight to ProRes, that would be a massive time saver because I love it when I use the EOS R with the Ninja 5 and it records to ProRes. So I can just take that SSD out, plug it straight into the computer and edit straight from there. ProRes files, amazing to work with. So if these cameras had that option, it'd be a great feature. I would absolutely love to see that on an upgrade perhaps, who knows. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this camera. Or if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. But the big question is, will I be buying this camera? <laughs>